I can hear you. I can hear you. Can you guys hear us in the in the chat or me? Uh, someone's just said no sound. Andrew, okay. Hi, sir. Right. Can Hello, you... everybody. Apologies for the delay. <laughs> Happy lot. Well, do you know what? It's quite fitting that we started this long stream with a fucking technical mishap. <laughs> it's kind of it kind of goes in tandem with this whole community and my approach to it and lawn and anyway. Happy lawnmas to everybody. Happy lawnmas to everybody except lawn, which is kind of ironic within itself. But I'm joined by Adam, Amanda, James, Hello. and Shin. So thanks for joining us, guys. Happy lawnmas. Yeah, Mary Lormus all. Hope you've got your chicken pot pies and Bud Lights in. Mm. Bowls of sugar. That's kind of Bowls the latest of one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I That's... could hardly sleep last night on Lornemus <laughs> Eve. Yeah. Oh, I was so excited. Yeah. I know. Uh, you, you wake up and it's like the first thing you think of. You spring out of bed like Christmas yeah. Day. It's like, what is today going to bring? But um, as I was kind of ranting on before I realised my mic was on mute, um, this is another Lormus Day. We've done something every day for the past God knows how many years. It's I have to <clears throat> kind of justify what I'm doing and question my own sanity, as I hope everybody does a little bit. Um, and I was thinking... As well as trying to justify celebrating the birthday of a sex offender, let's concentrate this stream on all the joy that Lorne has brought us. Because as, as much as we can never lose sight of how disgusting what he tried to do is, and we never stray too far away from the implications of it and never forget what it is, we can also at times just completely... Over, not overlook that, but put that to one side and just concentrate on the hundreds of hours of entertainment and laughter and joy he's given us. None of us would be here now if Lorne <laughs> didn't. Him. If, if it wasn't for Lorne, none of us, not me, Adam, Amanda James and Shin, none of us would be friends. No. Um, I wouldn't have gone to America and met Shin and had a great time and blah, 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 blah. None of us would, it would have taken our lives on a slightly different path. Just think about that. Even you guys listening in the chat, obviously you, you, most of you don't make content, which is to your credit probably. But even if you think about like how much of your sort of life is taken up by the entertainment side of it, listening to the calls, engaging in the chats with people. Some of you go on like, you know, forums and, and all that. It's, it's kind of a strange thing. Um, of what this guy has done and ha has it changed your kind of outlook on life and your sense of humour and, you know, how you view people like Lorne? It, it, it's worth... And we do talk about that quite often, but I think we should just focus on the pure hilarity and entertainment that he's brought us. And I want some of you guys in the chat, I'll do my best to keep an eye on it, um to sort of put together your favourite lawn anecdotes and sayings and things that you like about it. Not him the best, because he's not very likeable, but... Um, and a special yeah. hello to Amanda James, because yeah. she's got a bit of a cold hanging on to her a little bit, haven't you? So thanks for <laughs> going through it and joining us. I'm laughing us. at her illness. Um, Sorry about that. <laughs> Bastards. You're welcome. I'm happy to be here. Well... Um, what what what's your kind of thoughts on Lorn? Um, with regard to listening to him for so long, do you ever get bored of the calls? Do you ever think I've had enough of this guy? Yeah. Mm, yes. Yeah, yeah. I do. <laughs> That's probably um, a good thing. Yeah. Something usually will draw me back in. Um. But yeah, I definitely, especially, it's been a long time. <laughs> we've been, we've been listening to Lauren for a long time now. So it gets old. Um, but I've, Lauren made me realize people are worse than I actually thought they were. Oh no, that's not good. Like, no, I know. Well, when I first watched, when I first watched um, To Catch a Predator, I feel like I thought most of the guys, there, there must have been some other reason that they were doing what they were doing other than just that they are 
sick perverts. Like with Lauren, a lot of people thought that he um, was just kind of like a desperate opportunist mm. at first instead of, yeah. and I thought the same thing. Yeah. Like, oh, he's just a goofy, desperate guy who doesn't exclude this 13 year old girl from his dating options because he's desperate. He'll date anyone. And I, I guess I thought that about most of the the people. A lot of interference yeah. on the mic. Someone's doing something near the microphone. So it's like, you're rolling up a cigarette, Adam, or something? Not now. Oh, right. It was then. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, wait a minute. Do you have, Adam, you have tubes? Remember that? Remember that? You're part of Warnimus? Uh, part of Warnimus? August? Yeah, I the remember. It. That's so long ago. Wait, the tubes? What? No. The Remind tubes. me. Where are the fucking tubes? tubes? <laughs> <laughs> I was remember. Making, he, he was, Lorne used to uh, used to roll his own cigarettes, and I guess they're oh. called tubes. Oh, it's, that's what he calls them, right? Yeah. Right, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't. I don't remember that. No, I don't. Uh, he he was talking to Winnie, and he Roy was very drunk in one call. Roy came over very drunk. And Roy's like, where's my fucking cigarette? He was hammered. He couldn't find him. And Lauren is screaming, go get your tubes. Go get your tubes. Go get your tubes. Get your tubes. And Roy well, actually, like, more recently. I mean, I mean, back then. That? I'm sorry. Back when he was talking to Kayla, he was doing the same thing. Oh, just last night. Yeah. Oh, um, he did it last night. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. He was rolling cigarettes um, on cam while she was watching last night. And Kayla got real <laughs> sassy. And she was like, "What you do today? Roll, a, um, smoke a hundred cigarettes." <laughs> <laughs> That's probably the most she ever said to him. At least she showed a bit of personality. Yeah, last right. night was great in the chat log. She was starting to get sassy, and really, uh, her, the Kayla character was starting to get really fleshed out in the home, the home run here. See, yeah, I don't think. Oh, sorry. Uh, no, you spoke first. I don't quite right. I don't think I've ever actually got to the last page of the chat log. Like I tried to read it for a while and it just got to a point where I was like, I can't, I can't do this. Like, because at first it's kind of like what you were saying, Amanda James, like you sort of see him as this just uh, an opportunist who sort of is so desperate that he's gone for a 13 year old girl. Not that that excuses it, but it, mm -hmm. it's, it's almost easier to digest than someone that exclusively is looking for children, if that makes sense. Um, and I, but I, there's a point in that chat log where it starts to like constantly turn dark and sexual, and you're constantly reminded of what a deviant he was. And it got to that point, and I honestly, I just couldn't go back to it. I was like, it's too, too much for me. It's too like I don't. It was funny for a while, but now this old man is trying to make a teenager finger herself on a nightly basis, and it's it's disturbing me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, we we always make that mistake of calling his chat log sexual. I mean. The sexual, we all have a kind of a definition of what that is in the normal sense. Uh, I don't know what that was, all that shit. Uh, it was more of an obsessive, uh, oh, I don't know, impulsive. I, I have no idea what it was, but, it, you know, Lauren's idea of sexual is different uh, than ours, than a normal person. Yeah. You know? um, I, I guess you could call it technically sexual. Because uh, that's what that's what he's talking about, but he's so ignorant about it. But I think that was why I found it so kind of disturbing, because it's like this sort of sexuality with this sort of childish twist to it that he does even in the catfish calls and stuff. And it, I don't know if that's partially because of his lack of knowledge around the subject, or but in well in the chat log itself, it's definitely all manipulation though, isn't it? And it's just it, yeah. it's, it's it's more creepy than someone just being outright sexual because it's like. You know, even things like Mr. Penis and Miss Vagina, giving you genitals names that are like from a Mr. Man book. Yeah, what is that uh, That word, uh, para, I can't remember the name. Uh, somebody has sexual dysfunctions. Uh, can't, I can't remember what paraphilia? it was. Paraphilia? No. Paraphilia. It was, that's what it was. I think it was paraphilia. I mean, I think that's what he was communicating. Uh, right, because I've never heard of that. Yeah, paraphilia is any kind of abnormal sexual uh, issues. You know, children, right. I mean, pedophiles is one, yeah. and, uh, animals, things like that. Right, um, right. So it's like an umbrella term for paedophilia and bestiality yeah. and incest. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think Tiffany taught me that, actually. 
but I didn't I didn't know that until now. But that it what he what he was doing was definitely not sexual. I mean, I, I consider that to be a universal uh, some uh, something that is 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 commonly known. But what he was doing was not known at all. It was it, it was so foreign. And it still you know? isn't as well. And I think that's I think you bring up some interesting points there, dude. I think the reason you're struggling to define it is because it can't be defined by our current knowledge. We are not um, psychiatrists. I think that. Some real uh, the beauty of that chat log is I think there's so many mental conditions going on there that are undiagnosed that can be looked at. It's it's so Lorne's a very extroverted person, <laughs> so of course <laughs> everything goes into that chat log. Everything that is in his brain, or at least consciously on his brain, is spoken or typed on that chat log. Everything that he's thinking, all his impulses. There's a little bit of restraint because of um, uh, he thought he was getting, a little part of him thought he might be getting monitored and he had to be careful of the parents, but most of it is all, it's all there, isn't it? And it's what um, Tiffany always said, it's lawn in the wild. And it's, it's, it's great. I love these streams that we do where we go over the chat log. Um, you know, you know, and it, it was, it was fascinating to me to, to, listen to all the original videos that came out in you know before we had all our catfishing and stuff um, mm. you know that like we we do the chat log streams and we we could just go over one line and it can last an hour and a half it's like how is that possible just go in and go in and go in it doesn't oh, it because doesn't, it's got so much context it's got so much context has, yeah, every you're right, word. but but how is We've been doing these videos for a long time. It's been covered so much. Um, and yet we can just look at a sentence and just go yeah. over it for ages. And, of course, a lot of the same concepts and ideas and uh, kind of analysis is repeated, but it never seems to get too old to me. There's always a slightly different angle. We're always learning more about him. Uh, especially with, like the Casey calls over the last year or so. I, I, yeah. I've always said that if we went back to day one and started all over again, we'd have, we'd still have more to talk about and we wouldn't have repeated ourselves from what we said before. You know, there's certain things that have evolved with me. Like what, what Amanda was saying, you know, he is definitely a preferential predator. He's not an opportunist. You know, I mean, I mean, you throw that into there now, you know. Well, I think now is we've heard things that sort of make it quite clear that he has an uh, affinity for young, younger people, at least like that. Um, Casey call where he's he's incredulous that when he says, well, if the age of consent wasn't lowered to 17, you're telling me you wouldn't fuck a 17 year old. It's like, but you don't really understand right. what this is about at all, do you? It's like... <laughs> No, he thinks everyone in the world is waiting for the age of consent to be lowered like him so they can start having sex with 17 year olds. Yeah, like, you know, there's a lot there's a lot about him recently with uh, with all that stuff with the Casey calls that came out that were so clear to me uh, how wrong I was on so many levels. You know, um, I think he's extremely dangerous uh, and also the robot calls, too. You know, the, you know, I, I, we spoke about this last time. I mean, what he's doing outside of the catfish, we don't know until mm. we started getting glimpses of it, where he goes to Walmart. Yeah. It always surprises us as well. You think you have yeah. a good grip on him, what he does and the way he conducts himself and what, what his motivations are, and then something surprises you. I'll never get over the, the, the fact that he thought it was better that he'd left it as a mystery the job he was offering the girl at walmart when he's explaining the situation he's like well i didn't tell her what the job was it's like that doesn't make it any better yeah that was a great bluff by uh blue boy i don't know if he had that information or not but he think he may have but lauren just just took it hook line it was a great bluff wasn't right. it yeah you, you spot yeah. on and i remember when he was on with us and he said he didn't think it'd work it was great to try it and then he just fell for it long because he's so unsophisticated, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. I think the more telling one was the uh, potential sex worker who came to look at his shed. Oh yeah. <laughs> I think I think that one is, I think more revealing about 
what he's doing when nobody's looking. And when I mean nobody, I mean us. What did um, you make of that, Shin, though? Because I found it, it's like whole attitude. I think, like, it, she had obviously just said, no, I'm not interested in saying, staying here. But, like, the way he suddenly, it suddenly became like he, like her clothes were too revealing and that sort of thing. It's like, why, why do you care? Why does that bother you? Well, you got to, this is part, you, that whole situation, I think, is is part of uh, Lauren's conniving uh, ability to manipulate and, uh, you know, all of that stuff where he's got it all planned out. And his whole plan was to get both of Roy and her there and then eventually get Roy out of there mm. and just have her to himself. And and I think that he was, you know, there was one call recently where he, I, I remember it was a discussion maybe where somebody says, how can, you know, oh, no, it was on your uh, your channel, Amanda, with uh, uh, misdemeanors, where he said that Roy was jealous of him uh, in one of his assignments. And in that situation, you know, I can imagine they're in the motel room. This girl wants to color with him. Ro Lauren finds her reasonably attra well, attractive uh, and he wants that. And he's jealous of Roy, you know. Yeah. And uh, and you know that that whole thing was a plan on his part, and it was bad because he didn't yeah. have the tools to to pull it off. He didn't have the a, a decent place for her to come to to begin with, you know. Well, the whole thing, like, was, he was trying to charge them what was it, two hundred dollars each a month to live in a shed with with no windows and no toilet, no facilities, like anything. Mm -hmm. Was it even asked that? I think it was well, four hundred. I think it was four hundred each, and they had wow. to work. And they had to work with him on the teardown house. <laughs> and uh, they had to help with chores around the place. I mean, for $800 a month, couldn't they get themselves quite a nice apartment, rent and quite a nice apartment together anyway? How about just with plumbing and electricity? Mm, huh? Yeah. No, but <laughs> with, with, I mean, they could probably get themselves a trailer nicer than Lawrence up in that area for that kind of rent. That's crazy. Without having to, to put slave labor into it either. And without having to live in a tipping container. What's the latest with Lawrence selling his trailer? Has it gone off the market? Yeah, yeah, I believe so. It's not been advertised for a while now. <laughs> I think the realtor's just sick of the calls. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I yeah. I think you're right. <laughs> oh, I can't That's even. My, my brain's going in a thousand directions thinking of all the calls that people would have. Because people can't help themselves. I understand it, but like... Oh, some poor admin girl just started. Can you imagine that? She's like a kind of an office <laughs> assistant, first job, learning a trade, and then she has to put up with those answer phone messages. It's like so confusing. They're like, what on earth is going on in this area? <laughs> Can you imagine? Well, I don't think I, I don't think the realtor knew the extent of who Lauren was. Obviously, I mean, Lauren probably didn't disclose he's an RSO or anything like that. I think they started well, learning about do that. Would you? <laughs> I, well, I, you, you never know. I mean, probation could say anybody you meet, I want you to tell this to. Yeah, I know what you mean. Spot. But I, th I think what ha I think they probably started. Who knows? They could be in the chat. They could be watching uh, some of his content right now. But if you think about it, sixty nine thousand dollars. I mean, it's not worth. I'm talking about a seven million dollar where you can get a nice five percent commission on. It's not worth it. It's just not mm. worth it. And it's a shithole. Plus, plus, it was only worth twenty thousand at the most anyway. Yeah, because he was only trying to sell the land, wasn't he? He wanted to stay on the land in his trailer, didn't he? We don't know how he's uh, going to divide it, or uh, it's just we. To answer your story, uh, your question, Andrew, I don't, I don't know whether he's even there anymore, yeah, because don't do there it. could be a, uh. there could be a possibility that the town could have said, "Clean this shit up," you know, uh, or we're condemning it. Uh, you know, we'll do it for you. You know. Um, what's he gonna do? He's gonna he has to start putting his shit back together. He knows how to take shit apart, but not to put it back together. Yeah. Mm. Um, I've got a question from Amanda James because I, I find her whole take on Lom rather interesting um, because she has such a strong hatred for him, but probably yeah, listens to it. the calls more than anyone I know. Because what about that when you was at work and somebody you, there was somebody called Jeff Chef? And you was listening to the chef recall <laughs> on the way to work. It's like, what are the fucking odds of that? But, like, you hate this motherfucker uh, so much, right? Why do you listen to him so mm -hmm. much? What is it? Well, I, I think I hate him so much because I've listened to 
Sorry about that. I think I, I hate him so much because I listened to so many of the calls. So you really you still understand do. how. Yeah, I know. Well, now I'm not surprised by it. Now, I mean, there were there were times during the phone calls where I was shocked by the things he said, like the stuff he tried to do with Rhoda. Um, there's a call where he accused Winnie of not fighting her. Um, her rapist Oh, song. yeah, I remember that. Um, that was awful. Mm-hmm. And oh, most oh, recently... He went one step further in that, Amanda, though. He he actually tried to appeal to Winnie's racist side by saying that they sounded Mexican. And it was oh, just... I know! Ugly, ugly all around. So just cruel. ugly all around. Yeah, it was so cruel and horrible. He was drunk and like... I know what a Mexican sounds like. They was Mexican. They was why knowing that Winnie is racist, and she it would it would upset her more that she was raped by a Mexican. As ridiculous as that scenario is, you know, as ridiculous as, as it is to say any of that, he intended to hurt her with that information, and it's because he was jealous. He was mad because being raped is like cheating in his eyes. He doesn't care that yeah. she was hurt. He cares that somebody else you know, got the opportunity to touch her. It's just stuff like that shows you just how horrible he is. Um, And when he, uh, most recently, when he was talking to Casey and he said, you know, that famous line, oh, you wouldn't have sex with a 17-year-old kid if it was legal? Mm. Come on, Casey. Like, everyone would. Mm. I was so shocked when he actually (laughs) said that. You, I wonder how far, like, if they not just use 17 as the example like if he thinks everyone would go down to like 12 if they if we suddenly became like a mm-hmm. Cambodia or something yeah the the other thing that uh that kind of evolved uh, for me with Lauren is I didn't know if he was a racist or if that was something that the uh, earlier catfish were trying to evoke out of him and, and yeah you know it was hard to tell Bit of know, both, uh, whether he's just playing along. But when you read the prison letters, you know, he's he uses the N word many times. But also when he was talking to Casey and he's starting to woo her in the beginning, he at the very end, the last thing he says, and he has no clue that he just created a, an extremely awkward situation. He says, well, another thing you'll like about Maine is that uh, this is uh, it's 98 percent white. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> but something is like it? That. That's because in his head he's confusing her with the previous. Uh, you think that's what it was? You know? Yeah, I th- I think in his mind because I think because Winnie was Casey for a bit, wasn't she? And I think he they, he I don't think he's even got the mental capacity to kind of differentiate between the catfish. So he just thinks that yeah that'll appeal to her because he remembers her as being very pro white from when it was the yeah. previous. Casey I'm not saying that he's not there's more examples in that though you know he when he was talking to Roy about his his African bitch or whatever you know I I I didn't think he was racist in the beginning I I thought it was just a something I don't don't think he's um like a bigot per se though I don't think he understands enough to make a decision on whether to be a racist or not I think he just um, hears words and says them and is quite offense and doesn't think about the offense that that cause and that sort of thing. Like, I think he's, he'll happily use the N word because he's never apart from in prison, probably ever hung around with. A yeah, that, that could, yeah, that could be. And I, I would imagine he, he his whatever degree of racism he has, it probably increased in that Kentucky jail too. Mm. Uh, Cause it's, it's, I think it's predominantly black too, but um, well, didn't didn't one of the guys say in there? Well, what was it? Didn't one of the well, creeps the say that he was all right or Blood, something? Yeah, You're all yeah. right for a pedo, um, <laughs> or something like that. And one of the crips or the bloods. Yeah, well, he did have a he did have a best friend, Tyrone. Though, remember? Don't forget. <laughs> did he? Do you, you remember that, Andy? Sorry, what was that? I was trying to read the comments. Uh, Ramon's. Uh, I think when Ramon was with uh, Ramona. It may have been Ramona, yeah. He was trying to prove he wasn't racist and that he had a black friend. And they asked, he asked him what his name was. <laughs> he says Tyrone. 
<laughs> Another one of Lorne's kind of is, crazy is stories. Good mates just... with Silent Rick. It's, um, I love his little stories that go nowhere and the lies get uncovered. There's so many of them. It's so funny. So Silent Rick was a great one of that, of him just creating a person so that he could say he wasn't driving drunk. Yeah, oh, I thought you said throat. Like, you, oh, you oh that's... Throat was? that's probably the, <laughs> yeah, the best that's, one. That's, so good. that's recent. That's... I phoned you up as soon as I heard that. You did? I like, you, like you're calling got... a panic. You've got to listen to this. You've got to listen to this. You never guess what Lorne said. <laughs> I was like, but what? Because, I, I mean, the first... What, what was the first word? It's obviously something that rhymes with throat. Throat. Was... It was stroke. Have you ever had a stroke? Stroke, no, stroke, no stroke, stroke, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you uh, said, but you can imagine if someone kept, have you, you ever had throat. a throat? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, one was given to me last year. My mum forgot to give it me at birth and she just, re- oh, it's, it's worked out really well but, for me. I can eat, they, I can sing. He does get called out on it. Like, so he goes, you don't know what a throat is? And he's like, uh, No. <laughs> like, because at least saying, yeah, like saying, I don't know what a stroke is, would be not that. I mean, it, it's a bit ignorant if you're his age and don't know what a stroke is. But not everyone has been first aid trained in their lives and things like that. So that, but to then like try and make himself look more intelligent by going, oh, I thought you said throat, and not realizing that that makes him. M- much more Even stupid. Even more stupid. That's <laughs> yeah. the great thing about his kind of ass covering tactics, if you want to put it that way. Is <laughs> yeah. It always makes him look worse. He tries to dig himself out of this hole and just digs deeper and deeper and almost falls through to the other side of the earth. It's fucking insane. Um, yeah, no, see, on, like, Honest has just said a well about, like, he wouldn't have said the N-word with Ramona because he did know better. So I think, I mean, he does have some idea about racial or well, protocol might be the wrong word to use. But I think, I think like, when he's shouting the N-word at Roy, as someone else in the chat said, it, it was to hurt him because he, he was trying to upset Roy, I think. I mean, let's say, I, I don't know one way or the other whether he's, I don't think he's the sort of person that you would see at clan rallies or anything. No, I don't, I don't, I don't and to be fair, I don't want to really focus on that too much because there's too much fucking shit going on with, you know, and it, it kind of, um, yeah, I, I people have got their own ideas and there's in, there's information out there. People can draw their own conclusions. Yeah, but, um, you end up sidetracked to defining what is racism. Yeah, it's a, and it's not, it's not something I want to get. I mean, I'm not saying it was wrong to bring it up or anything. I just don't want to focus on it. It's, there's too much. We can focus on just well, the funny... Let's focus on the good good times. It's yeah. almost day well, after all. Before we go funny, can we? Can, it's something Adam brought up where he said something just to hurt somebody. He does that all the fucking time. That's the other thing. If he gets hurt, his way of responding is to hurt back. But isn't that what yeah. a lot of people do when they're in well, relationships again, where uh, yeah. they're on the back foot? And I'm not kind of just, I'm not saying he's a good guy. <laughs> Please don't misunderstand what I'm saying. And this is something that we're going to talk about, Shin, because you came up with the idea of a video that we're going to do soon about looking at Lorne's negative aspects and seeing if we can relate to them. Not that we're paedophiles, of course, at least, you know, I'm certainly <laughs> not that I'm aware of. So, um, but it's not that it's... I've been caught. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm pretty. I'm, 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 <laughs> never mind. But um, you no, know, it's kind of these little things that he does in the relationships. And, and it's like, I always try not to judge and go, right, have I ever done something like that? Have you ever been a bit of an arsehole ever? Have you ever? But of course, Lon takes it to a whole new level. And it's the fact that he continues to, to stay there. And he gets sucked into all the drama. I was listening to the Jamie's on event call on the way home. I really like that because it's like, it, it's such a stupid scenario that he can't, he's listening to Will talking to Jamie who's on a ventilator. So they're both in the hospital. He can't tell, he's listening to it and he, he, he just has to respond to the insults that Will comes out with. And it's it's so fucking yeah, funny. Yeah, of course. You, it's so, you, you, some of it surprises you because he doesn't react as insecurely as what you might think. Some of it, and then he just flips and then goes. Some of it's silly. Some of it is insecure. You can get a real good insight into the character he is. Um, kind of. Well, well. Again, I, I want to go back 
into this thing where, yeah, sometimes you do lash out back. You lash back when somebody hurts you. There's no question. It happens. But for most of us, you know, you know, I, I don't think we w- enjoy the idea of hurting that person, you know, and that's what I think has happened. Look, Bud Aisley just brought up a, a great one. His mother wasn't was trying to help him on the phone. And the last thing he said to her was extremely hurtful. Ralph and Gloria are just like your ex-husband. Yeah. You know, why the fuck did you say something like that? Well, I'm surprised he, he didn't say What about he said to his mum in the original Lawn is a Butthole call? Ralph and Gloria, please. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about. Apologies. Yeah, dude. no, no. When his mother no, was I agree, to say, dude. Look, it's f- yeah. But don't forget, and I'm not trying to justify it, he was very drunk. <laughs> but speaking that way to his mother about his sibling, it, it just shows a total recklessness and immaturity. A, a, a just so many negative traits there but there's that's what people like him do yeah but that's he's he he can he's i don't think and i think that's what makes him sort of consistently entertaining is he can never like rise above the situation he'll never take like the mature or the adult way or just go do you know what these people are taking the piss out of me i won't speak to them anymore no does he I think he gets off on I think he gets yeah. off on hurting people. If you look at his book, Andrew, you know, if you look at the chapter what, Taken where Abroad. He, yeah, of course. That's wonderful. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I don't know work. why I said Taken Abroad. Like, I, I, I thought you well, might have been well, referring he, to he, The Creature or The Holy Lornography. <laughs> that's kind of his book. <laughs> yeah, that's his the, part where he, the part where he has that woman kidnapped and he's rubbing the knife on her and saying, I'm going to kill you and pr- bringing her in total fear. Uh, that's who we, that's who I think he is. He uh, gets we had this discussion thing. when we were reading yeah. it, me, you and, and, and Tiffany. And we, if I remember correctly, I'm sorry if I'm speaking out of turn for Tiffany, but I don't think we necessarily agreed with the, the, the well, I'll, I'll just speak for myself. I didn't necessarily agree with the fact that what he was writing was subconsciously his own desires and I'm not saying it isn't but no, no, I just, not that I just thought of not it he was just extreme. writing fiction we're all capable of writing terrible things yeah but not to that extreme I, I think it was kind of a, a fantasy cosplay of his uh, where he, you I, know, don't, I don't know he, dude I'm not sure well that. you know we'll agree to disagree but I, yeah, I, sure. I think he gets off on that well, I mean, put it this way. I don't agree with you, but we're talking about Lorne Armstrong here. This is a guy who... This is a guy, I sound like Chris Hansen. <laughs> this is a guy who wrote those things he did in the chat log. This is a guy who said a lot of disgusting, disturbing things. So it's not completely out of left field. I just don't necessarily agree with it, but I'm open to being wrong because I have been many times about him. Um, I think there's one thing, before we kind of take a bit of a lighter turn it's like we must never forget how sick he is you know because as obvious as it seems as much as i can sort not defend him and i've i've always took a different stance with lawn i always try people get so angry by him i think sometimes they let emotions take the better of him and it's like the old virgin debate people got really heavily invested in that to the point was like breaking out in arguments and stuff it was bizarre. It was like, who gives a fine <laughs> fuck if he's a virgin yeah. or not? It's an interesting debate. Let's have a the conversation about it. But um, I think some people like automatically default to the worst possible thing when it comes to lawn. And, and like, it's, I see comments in the catfishing calls and they go, oh, have you seen how lawn, insecure lawn is about Wildo? Well, of course he is. If I had a girlfriend who had a fucking dildo shaped like their exes, I'd be pretty fucking upset about that too. I mean, I wouldn't even be in that scenario because they yeah, would have... Yeah, exactly. That's the point. That yeah, it is. The, it is, but what I'm saying you is you can't... You would have been long gone like <laughs> yeah. six months ago. You would have been gone. No, it's a crazy... I like that narrative. I like the fact that that was brought into it. I think it's great. I like those things that they introduce. But it's ridiculous... But it's like, well, fucking hell, what do you want him to do? Like, just not bother about it. I mean, it, it you can always go to that and say, well, what are you doing there, Lord? And you can say that about anything in relation to the catfishing cause. Why is he putting up with this? Why is he putting up with that? Just the crazy things that happen. That that Jamie on the vents thing, it's just fucking, just... Well, and that's not even... It. That's not even one of the You're worst right. things. The the funeral and the, TA, the TSA call and... Those are those scenarios are even crazier than that. 
but it still boggles the mind, man. Even as I was like, I was trying to work it out in my brain. I was just kind of because it's Lawmas Day. I thought I'll listen to a call on the way home rather than listen to some music. And um, I was like, I cannot understand. I mean, he's, one minute he's singing to her, then he's trying to like have a go at Will for saying these, you know, oh, I've just seen your butt and things like this. It's like, dude. <laughs> What 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 goes on? Do you get that as well, Amanda James? When you still listen to the calls, you're still baffled by the fact that he just buys everything. No, not anymore. No, I'd be shocked if he didn't at this point. Um, but I think the same thing. It's not that he is. It's strange that he's upset by these situations. These situations are designed to upset him and make him freak out. The The amazing part is his reaction and that he deals with all of it. And he has been for years and years. This goes back to him crying about the doctor um, touching Ramona's knee and helping her grandmother figure out how to fill out her medical forms. Yeah, to, you know, and screaming, you're only supposed to see him two hours you're a night, not paying six him. days a week, and you, know, you see him every fucking night. Just break up with her, Lauren. You've never met her. Yeah. How hard could it be to end a relationship that hasn't even started because you've never met the person? They won't. But I think that that's part of it, though, because he's limited in his options. You know, he's not like the rest of us where we could just go out to a bar or, you know, go on a dating app. He can't do any of that. So he 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 sort of is almost trapped in that situation if he wants the company. And that's part of the reason I think that you get to be able to be so ridiculous with him and see just how much he'll take, how much he can be cucked, which is always a lot of fun. And I think Law may be a unique character, and we've discussed this before, in the fact that even if you go before he was an RSO, Amanda James, Kayla, whoever else, maybe not Molly. Paula! Paula! But, the, but all of his kind of, not all, but most of his main relationships, 99% of them, because there's been a few of you taking into account the catfishing, have all been over the phone, over the internet relationships. It's all he, he kind of knows. It's what you said as, as well once, Adam, about him being conditioned by the catfishes. He can't see out of this crazy narrative structure that, that, that he thinks that's normal now. This is why he complains to probation about them getting, you know, what? how did he describe it? They won't get off my case. What? what did, mouth, shouting the mouths off <laughs> when they're trying to explain to him. That Jamie Amy, the stunning robot, isn't really interested in your lawn. It's not real. Oh, probation is shooting the bombs off again. It's like, oh my god. <laughs> I think he recognizes, um, maybe subconsciously, his uh, his limitations with uh, with the opposite sex. I think yeah. he's seen he's had enough experiences of rejection, or m- worse yet, just people ignoring him. Mm. Uh, you know, he'd be. I can only imagine him in a bar staring at a girl he likes and the, and the woman's just so uncomfortable, you know? Um, and I think he's the, the catfish is really, I think his primary outlet for any kind of, uh, romantic relationship. Yeah. And I think he recognizes that. Yeah. Um, and, and for several reasons too, aside from the fact that he's awkward, he's within two minutes, you could figure out he's extremely aggressive and, and just gross. Um, but I think he has a problem physically. I don't think he can perform it. And I've said this a million times. I know guys at ad nauseum, but I think he prefer the thing be on the phone, uh, the relationship be on the phone or on the computer. The computer would be his, his ideal situation. Um, but the catfish can't show their faces. So forget about it. But I, I truly believe he is content. He's risked so much for them with probation how many times have they they told him i mean uh his l- own lawyer uh, judge woodcock from the bench telling him mm-hmm. and he still continues it. it's like saying all right then take you're telling me to take out the romance in my life you know um but i i, I think he deep down knows that you know when the catfish come or cat, he's scared to death that you know what's going to happen yeah. when they finally yeah. 
Yeah, I I think he likes that sort of long distance relationship. I think he he prefers that that way. I I don't know though. I mean, I don't think he knows other... he prefers it though, Adam. If you understand what I mean, I yeah. Think that he is content in a strange way with what he's got. He wants because the thing is, it's like when you get, and it, I think we've all experienced this in life. When you get what you want, it's never it never quite lives up to your expectations, does it? If you've wanted something so much and then you get well, it and you're like... Mm. Yeah, I think the anticipation of a lot of things is actually better than the receiving of things. It can things. be a right. bit That's philosophical, can't we? And so the, j- the journey right is what matters. And it's the same with Lorne trying to obtain that romantic relationship because he's never quite got there. And I don't just mean in um, uh, never got to meet them, but he's never really got that unconditional... Um, devotion back that he that he always tries to give out, sort of. <laughs> and that, that's why he likes children too, by the way, because if there was a, 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 a I, I should say, prefers children, because a situation where they would meet face to face, he wouldn't be nearly as scrutinized uh, by a child than he would by an adult woman. So all of his imperfections yeah. and flaws might he might be able to gaslight them into believing yeah. this is normal. They haven't had previous relationship experience and stuff, so they've got no comparison, exactly. That's right. I, I, I think that's a part of, like, why that whole relationship with Kayla was so, like, oh, I want to get married with you and have kids and stuff, because it was all about controlling and manipulating a child. Right, right. And when it comes to the adults, he wants the vulnerable ones, the yeah. ones who live on the street. The ones who are dr- addicted to drugs, you know. Yeah, but I don't know. think he knows that though. No, that I, that's what I'm saying. The question is, is it? But I, I think it's, a, I think it's, 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 it's pretty evident. But the question is, is it subconscious or is it conscious? Yeah, no, of uh, course yeah. it's interesting. Uh, can I just mention what Ryan Engel, I think that's how you pronounce it, has just said in chat because it's really funny. Oh, if Lorne, if the journey is what matters, then he's the richest man on earth. <laughs> <laughs> Which is but he very didn't even true mean to go there. Because he literally all the last fucking 20 years of his life has just been one long journey to get something that he has never got. Uh, it's been one yeah. crippling blow after another. As uh, TCAP recipes, I think it's... <laughs> Is it teacup recipes always say? Is another blow to lawn? Another blow yeah. to lawn, yeah. I, I got a question. Have you seen the recent photographs of uh, Lauren's uh, bed where he's got a a, a name plate or, or a name for? You know, oh yeah, yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. Have you seen that? Mm-hmm. And, and and you've heard about the posters in the wall with Jamie and stuff too. Do you think yeah, his yeah. mother's ever? I've, I've mm-hmm. seen the posters. Yeah, well, with all that paraphernalia around. Do you think yeah. he invites anybody in to see any of that shit? Like, how often like does who, his mother... Who's, who's he got to invite in? Well, that's what I'm saying. How often, out of all the years we've known him, okay, we've known him, right? You know, just, you know, let that be a liberal uh, interpretation. But um, has his mother ever visited his trailer? I don't think so. Has she ever seen what he's done to the place? I think he always goes to her yeah. house. Oh, yeah? No. The yard sale, I, I right? I think... He, Yes, she goes over for the yard sale. I think um, Reborn told a story where his mom did see a picture of Jamie, a poster maybe, and made some kind of comment like, no, Lauren, nope. She's not having sex with you. (laughs) Yes, that was the comment. Yeah, no, she's not going to have sex with you. But I think he he brought that poster to her, though. I think he brought it to her. I don't think it, I think Maybe that's even weirder. To to, mm. I, I, th- I think his mother's smart enough not, not to want to step foot in that place, other than the time she had to go in to feed the dogs when he was in prison. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, true. But, well, either way, she has seen the posters, <laughs> according to the <laughs> Yeah, but I think he I think he tells his whole family about it. I think he refers to his like my my girlfriend, my fiance, whatever. Even even though they probably all roll their eyes like, oh Lorne's got another telephone girlfriend. Uh I, I, I think he's I'll very proud of it. I believe he told his whole family about Kayla. No, really. He was on the well, phone. He was on the phone with his mother during one uh, part of the chat log. And Kayla was actually, the, yeah, what would he, what on earth would he have said to him? 
I don't. I think I, I don't think he would have told the age. Yeah, yeah but I, I think he would have no. left out that she's thirteen. I think. So what, he do you be- at least... do you believe that as well, uh, Amanda James? I yeah, I don't believe he said her age or her correct age. Definitely not. I don't think he told his mother that. But yeah, I think he mentioned her to his mom. I, he I don't immediately agree. told. Really, he told his family, his mother. Um, his brothers about Casey, about the newest Casey. He's like, "Oh, I'm talking to Casey. It's the real one this time." <laughs> and they're like, "Okay." I, I believe it. <laughs> it's the real. You know, very this quickly. Time. Very quickly after they started I talking. I love to have heard that conversation. Yeah, so I yeah. wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. <laughs> so funny. But he told, he told his rape class, didn't he? He told all his rape mm-hmm. class about uh, yeah. her. Class. So I'm imagine, get go, over how funny imagine that going so into I'm that. About, I'm, I'm talking about the the children he's been pursuing. Like I believe, like let's talk about Molly. We know Tony knows about it. He told him about it. Yeah. Why would he be reluctant to tell his mother? Yeah, about but it? Tony's his seedy yeah. fucking horrible mate. Oh shit! I probably said too much there, but he didn't sound like a particularly. <laughs> Sorry to have he a. He said too much there. He's dead. Well, he's I know, but it, that, that's what you I mean. It seems actually... a little bit. I didn't even know the you guy. Can't... I'm slagging off a dead guy. I don't even know, but he didn't come across like a particularly pleasant guy to me and if your best mates with law you've got fucking issues that's the way i look well, at it if he knew maybe. that lauren was talking to a 14 15 year old girl and he didn't immediately punch him in the face then yeah he was the you, thank guy. you're exactly right yeah of course maybe maybe, maybe shin can confirm this reason. as well but you can't be libelous towards the dead so you can say whatever you want about tony although that might only be for celebrities well, yeah, it's not exactly like they have a reputation. Don't forget the, the, yeah. the ghost of Tony Farmer popping up in the chat every now and again, <laughs> yeah, so I've yeah, got to be yeah, careful. Uh, rest in peace, Tony. Um, Lon's, only uh, true, Lon's only true friend who used to tease friend. him about to catch a predator, which is fucking hilarious. I never gave him his uh, pressure washer back, did he? That's, but that again, I think that call I just after Tony dies shows a, a true testament of Lorne's character. He can't even help but slag the guy off right after he's dead. Like yeah. he sort of, he, he start he, and it's all about oh I'm so sad, feel sorry for me, my friends died. But at the same time, he's, he brings up all his little gripes with Tony, all the things he's borrowed off him and never returned, and all the times he's not been nice to him. And this is like the first person he's talked to in depth about the the death of his best mate. It shows it really just shows what a scummy guy is. The paedophilia aside. Well, that um. Tony's death is another example of Lauren bringing his girlfriend into every conversation with the people in his real life because he wrote uh, like a poem for Tony after he died and he talked about Jamie in the poem (laughs) he said like I'm so grateful now I got someone I can talk to about you I got someone to spend the rest of my life with why is your robot girlfriend pertinent to you know a poem about your dead best friend was he he brings brings, sorry he brings the girlfriends into everything he told his mom about amanda james about vanessa ann lee parker about ramona i think he told her everything i think he's told her everything age and everything i believe that oh yeah i i'm I'm taking that leap right now i don't you know that's fine but he cried sorry well, his mother is kind of an enabler. It seems like she Absolutely. has that personality. So I don't know if it would be in her character to say, Lon, you stop talking to that well, little well, girl. Well, let, me, let me ask you this. Let she me ask you said, this. Blah, blah, blah. You, do you think she believes the allegations against him in the sting? Oh. Yeah, I do. Who does? I mean, I don't know. Me and Tiffany Mama were Quinn. talking about that. Of course that. she does. Yeah. Well, yes, but also it it is so much easier. To, that that is her own child. Like that's her kid. I, I get it. It's I so get much it. But e- easier to deny it and think, mm. well, he was vulnerable. His head was messed up at the time. Like yes, I think she believes it, 
but she I won't think, believe that shit. No, she won't believe. I think she the, tells him what he wants to hear because she knows him well yeah. enough to know that if she argues with him, she'll get nowhere. What does she right. do on the phone calls with him when when he when he starts giving a shit? She just ends up. She's yeah, fucking. She, she's she's yeah, heard it all she before. She knows she, exactly she, what he's like. She always gives. I'm her... just saying. Sorry. Sorry. I, I wouldn't be surprised if she made excuses for him, even in her own mind. That he's not quite yeah. as bad as that chat log makes out. Maybe they I, did edit it to make him look a little worse. Like, yeah, he was talking to a kid. There's no denying that. Do you not know be and fucking hilarious if she house. hated him I more think, than I you think... did? Um, <laughs> I know. I think she she justifies it in the same way that he does. That he didn't actually fuck a kid, and I think she yeah. but she does that for different reasons, so as to not sort of see. Him look at him as a harmless in that monster. Right, you're right. You're right. But she gives. She always gives him very short shrift. I don't think she's got time time for the guy. I think she knows he's a useless waster, and I think she's quite embarrassed about him. And I think you know, like his other siblings have got problems, but you see, it, he actually says like Roy's round helping mum. It seems that Roy actually goes round and helps his mum a fair. Hangs out with her. Yeah, and hangs out there, spends time with her, and. Um, so I I think she I think she wishes he wasn't born, but because he has been, I think, I think no, honestly, I I I think a pair, I think a parent can look at a kid and go, that one, oh fuck's sake, you know. Like, she knows who he is. She knows yeah. who he is, and oh, and I, I think that I, I think the, the what was clear is at at his sentencing hearing, Andrew, she basically read just what he wrote. She had nothing to say on her behalf. Yeah. On his behalf. Yeah, you but me. what about her actually reading it though? What about the fact that she agreed to do it for him? She stood up in well, court. I mean, do you know what? Thinking about it, dude, do you not think? I think that, she didn't what? want to take care of the dogs. That's all. Yeah, yeah maybe. I... No, maybe. But just, just one sec. Do you not think that him making her do that? Because we did, we've discussed this a couple of times. Because we were like, there was a part of me that when he got up there, I was like, you, and it was the way that he looked at her. He looked over at her when she was doing it as if to say, yeah. well, yeah, come on, hurry up. It's like, w- w- yeah. isn't that the worst thing? How dare you make your mum yeah. stand up there, speak a load of bullshit that even you don't believe when she's old, you know, she's kind of making a fool of herself. It's like, oh, it, it, it kind of that great to me. I think, I think his mother recognized that he had nobody else. Mm-hmm. And she's she's by default the only person. If his own mother won't come in to court to ask for leniency, yeah. then you know maybe he, they would have thrown the book at him. You know, whatever. She felt obligated to keep yeah. doing this shit over and over and over. Again. This is the reason that she still gives him money and you know helps him out and stuff because it's through a sense of like parental um, obligation. Obligation. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't everybody yeah. need? Well, a little bit of that you know even well, yeah but not. i would I, th- I think everyone does need a bit of that but i think most people get that from their parents with a lot more love than uh lawn gets it's from scary. mother gwen yeah yeah, yeah. But, but also but most people aren't sort of degenerate pedos so it's fair there's well, people I wonder if she feels a like a personal level of of responsibility or blame in the situation and accepting well fully accepting what Lauren is that's going to come with a level of blame on her part because your kids failures are kind of a reflection of you whether that's true or not I feel like that's how a lot of parents think and feel even subconsciously my kid fucked up so bad where did I go wrong what did I Mm. do wrong and then you start to remember all the times where you weren't a good enough parent I didn't give enough attention i didn't you know i my eyes weren't open wide enough for the red flags i should have done right. this better i should right. so yeah. except yeah accepting what he is might just make her feel awful about herself and feel like she's yeah. to blame why so, couldn't it have been lauren not michael why couldn't it have been lauren <laughs> <laughs> yeah i wonder if she's had that thought a time or two but Time Machine came in with something. Uh, yeah, I saw so that. I'm in the middle of catfishing Roy and recording everything. And spoiler is just as big a big a piece of shit as Lauren. 
wow, I thought he had kind of, I thought uh, compared oh, to Lauren, I thought he was, you know, uh, much better than that. I guess, you know, mm-hmm. more, than we, more than I do. Uh, inside uh, just unless here. Roy tried to have sex with a kid, I don't think he's quite as big. As yeah, he Roy is that's a, the thing. A loser, that's the bridge sure. too yeah. far, right? Didn't he threaten to yeah. kill one of his girlfriends with a bullet? Oh, that's it. That was yeah. Just, yeah. Uh, like, hy- I mean, hyperbole. That's all that. Yeah, was. Yeah, it was just just empty threats. No, of course it was. I'm not. Him. I'm not saying that he really was going to go and murder her. What I'm saying is, when I heard that, I was a little bit. Shocked, I was like, "Fucking hell!" For somebody Your to speak like that was quite disturbing. Yeah, but I also like heard recently that apparently, like sometimes he'll just go up to Lorne, like, and just say to him, "I know what you are, and I know what you did." And apparently, there was—I think it was on one of Blue Boy's calls, and I think, like, didn't he say, like, he? It sometimes he would like go and get drunk in town and be really upset because his brother's a pedo. So I'd hope. Oh, that's I'd love what... to know that. Yeah. Yeah. That. I don't know if anyone can verify no, that. No, that or was the yeah. story. Yeah. A time um, machine. If you get a chance to um, talk to him, uh, if you can clear that up, you know what? I already know the story. What... You do? Yeah, I already know it. He, um, I think Blue Boy said this. Uh, um in a stream but he blue boy found out i think it was from the canadian woman who befriended lauren and roy mm-hmm. uh, not sue the other one she said oh, she was like walking the through recent walmart one. with roy yeah, yeah yeah she was walking through walmart or something with roy and he was drunk as usual and he's like my brother's a fucking pedophile it's a piece of shit he was like shouting <laughs> it the kid fucker <laughs> <laughs> was he there? Was a kid fucking? <laughs> was Lauren no, there? No, Lauren wasn't there. No. Uh. <coughs> oh my god. Um. Yeah. So I, th- I, I mean, if you're that quick to call your brother a pedo, I would hope you're not a pedo as well. But. Uh. Anyway. Um. <laughs> <laughs> shall we? Um. We can sort of um, bask in the glory of some of his greatest hilarious moments, of which there are so, so, so many. It, it, it's, it's staggering. Like I, I talk about a lol cow, cow is is like it's just nothing. There's nothing quite the same. Um, um, just tell us some of your favourite moments, Adam. Oh, I, oh, you should have. I should have prepared for this. I didn't know you were going to throw that at me. I mean. Uh, a, a lot of my like laugh out loud moments. Uh, I've said it a lot recently, but are definitely the Winnie calls, and I still can't find it. I think maybe my favourite quote of all time of Lorne, and it shows what a childish sense of humour I have is. But um, and it, I think it's just because it's it's a very funny line from Winnie, and then uh, a very funny, well, a, a very stupid response from Lorne but when she's she's talking about having some intimate time with Dan and he's all upset and he goes and she goes I only jerked him off a little bit with my mouth and this and then he's like what the fuck and she's like well baby it's the only way he likes to come and she says it really matter matter of factly (laughs) and then Lorne just goes and it's so important for him to come in your <laughs> mouth. <laughs> it's, it's like a, a parent telling off a kid for, for, for going apple picking or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah this, he's yeah. full of ridiculous shit like it, that. It's the fact the things that, he says. Yeah, the, the little... <laughs> phrases that he comes out with are just magic yeah what are your guys' favourites oh god it changes depending on what call I'm listening listening to at the moment <laughs> yeah, yeah see the I throat thing's the... one of my favourites at the moment oh the um you don't know you don't know what a throat is <laughs> yeah <laughs> me too <laughs> I laughed so hard at that. I don't even yeah. know why, but that was so funny. The robot says, 
Has anyone in your life ever asked if you have a throat? <laughs> no. <laughs> I can't it. was just so dumbfounded yeah. by his stupidity. Yeah. You don't know what a throat have you, is? <laughs> have you guys heard about uh, George Glass's Lorne Quote blog? Yes. Uh, we did a stream on it where I, we picked off some of his more philosophical well, quotes. Okay. Well, it and, says now um, it's got 900 on it, but I think oh. I only looked at the first page or something. So. Yeah, it's brilliant. Like we oh, we awesome. did a stream and picked out some of the chats and we'll con uh, some of the yeah. quotes and we'll continue to do that. Some of them are just uh, like some of the Casey ones, the Blue Boy ones are great. I like the um, you coming out with shit like that. She calls me a pedophile herself. That I was in fucking hysterics when I heard that. That was such. An amazing thing to hear. Like he just, <laughs> oh, he calls me. She, he oh, calls you know me what, Casey? Fella. Call. You know what one I really like? It just popped in my head because I, I remembered Lauren calling Casey's coworker her sex boy. Sex boy. Sex boy. Um, when he was trying to, uh, kind of like play both sides before the throuple, he was texting Jamie. <laughs> all kinds of dirty stuff, like flirty stuff. And Jamie emailed Casey and was like, oh, hey, just so you know, Lauren, Lauren's trying to pursue pursue you. Well, look at the kind of stuff he's saying to me. So Casey confronted him and forced him to read the text to her on the phone. So he had to read these very humiliating phone uh, um, texts where he's saying like, put your phone in your panties and I'll buzz you later, lol. <laughs> And he was so embarrassed. He didn't. He's like, oh, you don't want to read it. And she's like, well, too bad, Lauren. You said it. You've got to read it. And at that point, just hang up the phone. How is it worth it? How is it even worth it at that point? Just hang, just say, no, I'm not fucking reading you my private text messages with my ex. Too bad. I've known you for a week. Fuck you. But Lauren won't do that. He went through that humiliation and read those texts where he told... He told Jamie to tell her boyfriend that her heart and pussy will always belong to Lauren. Yeah. Is that the same one where he, the front wedgie? Yes. Yep. Oh. He's going to pull her panties into her slit. He's got some colorful language. Well, why is he going to do that? So he can, <laughs> because oh, he thinks that's sex. <laughs> I know. I can't Because he thinks that, that's romantic. All right. Is it, uh, wouldn't that just be quite painful? Yes. It would I think be. it would probably it would cause injury. Yeah. Uh, there was a guy who died from a tonic wedgie. He was the vagina. So. He yeah. also, if you guys heard the Donkey Kong call, the recent yeah, 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 um, I did, robot yeah. call, he was furious about Jamie sitting on a man's shoulders in a skirt without her panties on. <laughs> he said... You got, you got to pop your pussy on Carter's neck. <laughs> I mean, if she if she was my girlfriend, I would be a bit upset if she if my girlfriend did that. To be fair, that's that, I don't think that's an unreasonable thing to not want them to do. But it's Lauren, so it's good. I mean, again, she does feel like oh, if you're. You want to sit on somebody's shoulders without your panties on? Go ahead, but um, you know. <laughs> yeah, you. I'm not. Bring yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. They've never even met. I think he likes being cucked. Yeah. Uh, yep. Yep. What do you that, mean? That's, that's what, what do you mean by? Sorry, I don't know what that means. Oh, oh. Andy, where have you been? Well, just explain. <laughs> so, cuck. It, so it's, it comes from the old word cuckold. So it's like a, a man that has a wife that fucks around with lots of other guys behind his back. But these days, it's used in a more porn terminology, where it's more like a guy literally watches his woman get fucked by other guys, and in some cases, gets off on it. Ah, so if it, what we could crime. have here is if Lauren had more experience in actual real girlfriends, he could be that kind of a guy. Because, you know, it's funny you should say that, because in the Jeffrey call, when he goes, you're cheating on me, it's like, I got the impression 
he was getting there was some form of him that was enjoying that <laughs> why would you stick around blame... so long with like with all these women doing the same thing to you unless you got unless it didn't bother you that much like i don't it's either having it's either you get off on it a bit or you've got literally zero self-respect i think mm-hmm. my i think there might be something that because he's getting cheated on and she's still around it makes him feel a little bit more of a man how can i explain it not necessarily like that but what i mean is he's involved in the drama girls are involved in him he's getting cheated on it's like it's it's almost like he feels part of being in relationships and this is what they're all about and i get there might be something do you want to, am i making that clear it's like i get that impression Listen to the Jeffrey call and listen to the way he shouts, you cheated on me. He's not as rageful in that moment as he is when she's on, she's texting, the robot's texting Rod. That's right. That's exactly right. And that's, that was a point I made a few streams back where his realm is texting, phone calls, and exposing himself. And if any of the catfish have someone on the you know on the side doing any of those three things he's told he's much more yeah, enraged than if they yeah. did had sex with him yeah i think you're right mm. there dude because and 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 the other thing yeah is i think this all goes back again to you know the the cuck, cuckolding and all that stuff goes back to his his inability to perform in that regard so if you if you notice a lot of times he's talking about I'm gonna go bring a girl back here, uh, you know I'm gonna use Lamandre on her. Yeah. He, he, talk, he talks about you know other instruments, but you know never his dick, you know. Yeah. And I believe that he is physically and emotionally incapable of having sex. Wow. And those are and and he's doing and he mm, he might be something he does it. I don't say he's cuckold. I say he 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 listens to it by. So you're saying he knows that dude. He, he's i think he, he he i think he almost prefers it he, i think he needs it you know aside from the drama that he wants because it it's, turns him on it's what gets what he get gets off on it's it's sexual for him but what a um, bizarre situation to be in and the fact that he, this, he well this... he's, he's a very normal guy andrew what can i say no but what i mean is <laughs> no but what i mean is like just think of the crazy stuff that had to happen for him to get catfished like because Think about, we've talked about this a lot. Where would his life be without the catfishing? What would his, li- what yeah. would his life have well, looked like if all can, those can weirdos... I, can I say one more thing, one more thing that, that Sorry, dude. Yeah, brought this way back? We're going to go back to Ramona for a second. Sure. Ramona would say something like, um, oh, what do you, uh, you know, as in, in, a, in a sarcastic way and, and trying to kind of uh, demean him a little bit. What do you think he's doing right now? Looking at my pussy right now? And mm-hmm. Lauren's response was, is he doing it right now? Is he? Yeah, yeah. He did that several times. It was almost like he he wanted to hear about it. Well, and remember, like the so with Ramona, they never had phone sex, did they? But when he um, he's speaking to um, Ember and the private detective, yeah, they give him a very in depth yeah, uh, yeah breakdown of what what I the, want to hear. Your, I want to hear it. I want to hear it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What the doctor did to that, and then the, yeah, there's no point where he goes, "Oh, that's too much. Don't tell me anymore. That's too upsetting." Is it? He wants. But, he wants every but, but, detail. Compare that with when the doctor or she saw the doctor naked. Remember that? What call? Remember that call? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was enraging to him because that was yeah. in his realm. His realm yeah. is to exhibit himself, and that doctor exhibited himself, and therefore mm. she chose him over her. Over uh, she that, chose that, him over him. That's yeah, because it, it's a situation. If you're spending that he time with guys on the phone. In. It's much worse than you fucking them. Yeah, yeah, because he. Well, I'm, I'm like literally sort of realizing this now, but I, yeah, like I said, I don't think he can perform sexually. I mean, he's not. We all know he's not particularly well endowed. Um, so, well, even have, it, are there any catfish pictures? I'm curious because I've, I've asked around, and I know Kayla. There's many mentions in the chat log where he's exposing himself and he's apologizing because it's soft. And he did that a lot of times with the catfish. I don't think there's any photographs that show him with a prolonged erection. I should say that. Yeah. You know, I, I think if it happens, it happens for literally about five seconds, 10 seconds. That's about it. That's but the I think thing. He, he's Isn't cursed. This amazing. Like a, a guy who's devoted 
so much time and energy into trying to fuck people he shouldn't, and he's got he can't even get. Not only is he probably maybe be a virgin, he can't even get a, a fucking hard on. He's probably never jizzed either. And I think that's a lifetime thing, by the way. I think it goes way back, especially when he was going bald. He's, he really he's, is uh, the ultimate loser, this guy. There's nothing quite like it. <laughs> no, you know, to a certain extent, you would you think you would have compassion for somebody like this, right? No, I, I'm, I, I feel no, It's joy. all his own fault, yeah. isn't it? All of it. Yeah. But I, I was quite surprised because that's fairly recent when I heard him say, oh, I'm going to use Lamondre on that go to try yeah. and make Thanks Jamie for bringing Jets. that up, dude. That's that a like weird a thing. Yeah. yeah. But it's almost an admittance there, like, well, what I've been blessed with or not blessed with is not enough. to Because if you want to make your someone jealous in a sexual way, you're not going to go, oh, yeah, I'm going to get a tool because uh, then they don't know this other person <laughs> anyway don't, i'm gonna get this massive 12 inch dildo and shove it up yeah. and like 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 if you want to make someone jealous you're like yeah i'm gonna go and fuck the shit out of that person right right yeah well what would it work if you, you know if, jamie... if, if somebody... sorry go ahead Amanda. no it's okay he he knew jamie would be much more upset about lamandre cheating on her than lauren doing it she valued lamandre far more than she valued lauren that's why he said Lamandre, which is insulting to himself, and he didn't even figure it out. That's I one of my Lauren favorites. To, I think Lauren wants to, her to have a dildo in the shape of his penis in that situation. Oh, definitely. I think that's what she he, wants. Um, I don't think it's like because because again, he's not he he cannot perform. I I, I guarantee it. Honestly, though, do you know what would have been real nice if the, one of the catfish had got a mold of his cock and made a dildo out of it and then put it next to Lamondre and <laughs> Wilder? Oh, and, yeah. And, and then put a picture and sent it to him of the three <laughs> dildos. Like, which one do you think I'm going to use? Clue, it's not yours. Yeah. Um, um, I don't know. There's just... just too much evidence. Uh, yeah, you, yeah we brought us you know, really it, good, again uh, the three realms are the you know he's more pissed that somebody spends time on the phone with somebody else than i fucked him quickly and i came to talk to you okay well we can talk now that that would probably be you know yeah you'd, you'd, go, you'd have the whole conversation about that but the fact that you'd spent a half hour longer with this guy than which should have been my time that's where he's pissed you, you don't 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 interfere with my kingdom here that and it's also like why in the Sheffrey call that he goes mental because they went on webcam together. Right, that's like right. his thing. Did you webcamming. See his dick? Did you see his dick? Yeah. Yeah. Show you <laughs> Look at what uh, Ruthie R you know? says in the chat. Ruthie R says going through real emotional pain reminds him that he's in a relationship. Which I think that's right. part of it. It's like he feels he gets gratification from being involved in that kind of scenario. It's like right. there's a woman there, and there's drama going on, and he's feeling something, and he's hurt a little bit. And like you said, Shin, I think there's something in this. L- listen to the deviation between the contrast between him going crazy about texting uh, Rod. I am typing, and you cheat on me. This just very it's, it's worlds yeah. apart. Um, yeah. I think there's there's a lot to be looked at there, and and it goes across the board in all the different catfish scenarios, um, the way he behaves about you know like spending time with him, like he believes that spending time with someone on the phone is really spending time with him. Of course, you could say that in some degree, but someone who it's not really is it? It's not what you want to be doing with your life, you know, a lot of the time. By the way, Nathan says uh, maybe being cucked is a form of perceived power, like he can use that info as a one-up whenever. I, I agree with that. There's definitely some truth yeah, in I, that. I agree, but, yeah. but these theories aren't mutually exclusive. This guy's got a cornucopia of fucked up problems. Yeah. Oh, you ain't kidding. You know? Yeah, because I yeah I think he also he doesn't mind them telling them that stuff because then like when they have a go at him for being a shitty person, which is quite regularly, he can go, "Well, you fucked this guy, or you sucked this guy." Is like putting it's it in the excuse. bank. Yeah, you. it's something for him to talk about. You know, it's mm-hmm. a reason to be on the phone. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. So, some people prefer angry upsetting company to no company some people who are very uncomfortable in themselves i think he he doesn't 
there's something in Lorne's psychological makeup where there's there's kind of a, a vital part that all of us possess that's missing with him. It's like he experiences all these emotions and he's all over the place, but he, he doesn't seem to have any ability to analyse anything, ever. No planning, no self-assessment, no looking at a situation and trying to figure it out. And it, it, it was What's highlighted to me when... The, which was hilarious, where uh, there was the throuple, um, uh, what do you call it, proposal on the phone. I think I mentioned it on the last stream, but we'll go over it again because it's great. Um, where the robot proposes to Casey. <laughs> Lord, oh, yeah. He's got, he just can't, he's going, he's, he's going through these range of emotions. First he goes quiet, then he's like, uh, congratulations. Then he starts crying. Then he's like, I just don't, I can't understand what the fuck's going on here. Because he's <laughs> kind of like, all the red flags are there, right? That it's a totally stupid scenario that makes no sense. But he can't put the pieces together and come up with the conclusion that it's bullshit. He can't. Because even Do when, it. even when he's getting like, all these questions are coming at him like, when did this happen to you? Who's your first, uh, when did you have sex last? He's like, this sounds like that church of card bullshit. He, can't, he still can't figure it out. So he's unable to, 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 to sort of come to any sort of conclusions. There's some part of his brain that's missing. <laughs> oh, yeah. The brain part of his brain. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think it's really, uh, to me... I don't know if you guys have ever done this or have you ever like tried to imagine what it's like in the catfish world that they're setting up, like where they are, you know, <laughs> you know, like even like what room they're in, uh, you know, usually it's in a hospital or a rehab center. <laughs> you or try a jail. and picture it as it's real in your mind, like with the, yeah. uh, the sloth cat yeah. calls, you mean, uh, the, the uh, videos. Yes. yes. That's the closest all, I guess. All the time. That, but... All the time. Yeah, that's Danny what did a great he, job of painting that picture. That yeah. yeah, it's brilliant. The voodoo hospital thing <laughs> it was mad, madness. No, it's like we were there. <laughs> yeah. You feel like you, know, you were it, there. It, it, I think Lauren cried more at Rhoda's funeral than Tony's. But he wasn't at Tony's funeral, though. He's banned from it, he wasn't he? He wasn't at Rhoda's funeral, either. <laughs> 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 well, he wasn't at Tony's because he was too busy being unemployed. <laughs> I thought, was he, didn't Wendy tell him he wasn't welcome? I thought was the real story behind that. Well, well, the robot came out with the information uh, recently on a, that thruple, trouble call, whatever it was, where apparently only three people showed up at his gravesite. So it wasn't like there was children or anything like that. But the robot said that's why he couldn't go. I thought that was hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> It was funny, and then I think the robot said, "Sounds like Tony." Either the robot or Casey said, "Sounds like Tony needed to have." Because they were talking about how probation wanted Lauren to have real life relationships, yeah. and then one of yeah. them said, "Sounds like Tony should have had more real life relationships." There were only three <laughs> people at a funeral. Yeah, yeah, that was quick. Holy shit! Yeah. <laughs> so, Andrew, right now it's what three fifty three Eastern time here. Okay. This 16 years ago, right? That's what we're talking. Yes. Right around now, what is Lauren doing? Oh, wow. He's at well, work, right? He's got to be at work. Right. Let's, let's, let's a... open, let me open the chat log. Um, strangely enough, it's in my quick access thing. Well, no. when I... he, he, he's still at work right now. I don't think he's chatting yet. Did he? Did they chat? I don't, did they chat much at all on the last day? Because obviously yeah, he's been working and then traveling. Oh, yeah, bit, yeah. I don't think so. No, there's there's oh, not there? a lot. It jumps from twelve um, forty nine. Oh, I'm gone. Thirteen. Yeah, thirteen thirty seven. Thirteen thirty five, and then it jumps to uh, seven thirty five. So there's going. a there's a gap of like six hours. So that's right, probably the afternoon until seven break. in the evening. Right, he got caught at 8.30, right? It was 8.30, I believe. Right. So, or was it 7.30? Could have been 7.30, one of the, whatever. Um, so right now, he's on the lull. He's definitely got a picture <laughs> of Kayla on the uh, on his steering wheel. <laughs> I've got that image in my head now. 
that's what I'm saying. He's all excited. He's probably told a few guys at work, number one, that it's his birthday, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And number two, that he's going to have a hot time with his girlfriend. On his yeah, birthday. yeah. Right. It, it'll be it'll be t- it'll be well probably like it'll be going around that warehouse or church gym or whatever it was he was working at that time and be going i'm 37 today and i'm about to go and go to plow town on this little hottie right, yeah. right. <laughs> and they'll be like oh he's legend a, he's got to run a few errands before he goes there too right he's gotta he's gotta get gas <laughs> yeah and he's gotta go to walmart yeah so my guess is he got paid this day because it was a Thursday. So a lot of times construction people get paid on Thursdays. Yeah, yeah. At least our company does. So he got a paycheck. He probably, he, so he had to go to the bank. He was all excited. So, and of course, gave Bud a quick pet and left. I don't think he gave a fuck about Bud on that day. Probably gave him a well, quick don't, kick. Don't be well, so Kayla mean. Do you him. remember his story about wanting to turn back when he thought about Bud and it was... It, it was but then he didn't. He just carried on yeah. to Kayla's anyway. <laughs> That's when Mr. Yeah. Penis Kayla took over the steering. Him. Fuck Bud, right? Yeah, if Kay- Kayla, that's the problem, well, Kayla though. Kayla told him, make sure, make sure you pet Bud for me. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Sure you pet him. Okay. Yeah. Probably with his cop. <laughs> he's just, uh, he's just hours away yeah, from doom. Bud. Yeah, sixteen years. Think so about, happy. Do you think that he ever thinks about the sting on his? Absolutely, I reckon it's the at the forefront of his mind today. He's sitting at home feeling really sorry for himself. No fret. Hopefully, but he doesn't. He's, just... he's not the type of person to feel sorry for himself, Lorne, Though that's the remarkable thing. And to be honest, without that aspect to his character, we wouldn't have the catfishing call because he wouldn't keep calls. He wouldn't keep going back for more. Because he thinks he always tries to put a positive spin on things, and where he's the hero. Yeah, he's probably at Mama Gwen's actually. She's probably making him some food, and Richard's probably going to suck him off. Some uh, corn pudding and Aunt (laughs) Sharon. (laughs) You know what I'm talking about? And and uh, Aunt Sharon. Well, Aunt Sharon's not around anymore to make him the pie. So. Uh, I thought that was his mum's chicken pot pie, not Aunt Sharon's chicken. No, no, a blueberry pie or. All right. He eats the whole thing. Well, but. as far as him thinking about the sting, he told Casey, Casey number three, that he dug out his copy of the sting to watch it again, just to see her. And he turned it off right before Chris Hansen came out. <laughs> so, yeah, I think he thinks about the sting, but maybe for a different reason than normal people would think about. But how fucked thing. up is that anyway? Even if she Incredibly wasn't actually a 13-year-old girl at the time, he's literally looking at her playing a 13-year-old girl. Oh, no, but just uh, take that out of it. And the fact up. that that whole scenario is the one that ended up ruining <laughs> yeah. him and getting him in prison for five years, completely <clears throat> destroying his life, yeah. humiliating him, it, getting mocked by all those lot online, just destroying any shred of dignity life. that he destroyed his life yes just that's mm-hmm. we can leave it at that and he somehow it, but that oh, i cannot even begin to conceive how a human being that hasn't been diagnosed sane can think that that scenario that presented itself was real and not only that yeah. he well, would have had everybody who was a little bit close to him, as in professionals mostly, saying the same thing to him, and he still wasn't having it. Wow. And they were, yeah. That that was the most shocking thing about the whole Casey thing with me. Because she would be a constant reminder, not that he would need a reminder of the day that he destroyed his life, but she would be a physical, mm. tangible reminder yeah. <laughs> of the most humiliating, horrible experience of his entire life, and yeah. he still wanted her. Yeah. But well, you think not you never want very... to see that woman again. She but, saw him get arrested, face yeah, down, his but hat Amanda, fell off. For him, that's a very small price mm. for him. I, and the Crazy. other thing she has going for her, though, as well, is he believes he knows what she looks like, and he remembers her as being very attractive. So like that, that easily outweighs. Yeah, and he, yeah. I don't. Think he does. He doesn't have the uh, the emotional uh, intelligence or. Uh, to articulate or understand that it's not 
it, it, for anyone else, it'd be fucked up. You'd be like, well, basically, that woman sent me to jail. But then no one yeah. else would be in that situation again, really, though, would you? So it's kind of... But, yeah, to him, it's like the the chance of getting with an attractive woman is overrides any sense of humility or Absolutely. dignity. Absolutely. Has. And not only that, the familiarity aspect to it. you got to remember, all of these catfish Lauren never met. I, I doubt he saw any of most of them, whatever. But Casey, <clears throat> he was able to tell probation, we met before. That's you know? crazy, though. So that's I mean, what he's I, doing, I he's reminding himself of the time that they met. I wonder if he watched the outdoor footage also for his birthday. <laughs> I, mean, mm. I mean, for well, I doubt it. Casey was my case. part of that. Do you know what Get that on the ground. as well, though, um, with regard to him buying that scenario, is how little he can see through other people's eyes, that he has absolutely zero empathy because he didn't even stop to think that somebody like that could even for a second be interested in him. It See, it says one of two things. He either doesn't understand how people see child predators, or he never saw him. He doesn't. He didn't see himself as one at that point. Now I think that he'd made peace with that part of his life. In other words, what he'd done created this false narrative where he wasn't to blame. So he didn't see it the same. He doesn't see it the same way that we do, or decides not to. So it's easier for him to back to to go with the Casey thing. Isn't it? It's easy for it's him not to. A difference of, of, of interpretation for him. It's it's that he compartmentalizes things. He's able to take things that are bad and put them aside. Take things that are good and put them in front of him, and and then ignore everything else. And he creates yeah, but... his own reality. He makes he shit does. up in his head. He he created this whole personality of Casey in his head, and this idea that she regretted being a part of this thing. And that she, <laughs> really? I remember him saying long that. ago, I bet she regrets she being a part of it now man. the sheriff. That would win his heart right there. It. Yeah. So he, he made this whole, you know, her opinion up in his own head that she was just there for money. She doesn't really agree with it. And then she found out how corrupt and fucked up perverted justice and NBC are. And she regrets having anything to do with it. Yeah. yeah. And that was there's no reason for him to think that other than wishful thinking. That's it. Um, Just like you love me lawyer, and I love you. Yeah. Well, his lawyer, you know, like you said, Shen, it could have been worse would, though. Well, like you just said, anybody else would be able to see through somebody else, you know, through other people's eyes and be like, why would this person be interested in me? She had me, she helped have me send to prison for trying to right. commit a horrible crime. Different. Why would she want me? His lawyer because, said that to him, essentially. He said, like, I, I don't doubt that your feelings for her are genuine. Your interest for her is genuine. Ask yourself, why would she be interested in you, Lauren? Mm. And Lauren totally, this is a man he's paying out of his own pocket, this lawyer. What he hired say? this lawyer to help him. And he, what he, he, say? he disregarded. What uh, did Lauren he, say? Yeah, to the lawyer. Yeah. No, um, but what do you say to the lawyer? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think he defended Casey and said, well, you, you're blaming her for something I did. She oh, didn't right. commit a crime. Irrelevant. Yeah. I did. Uh, yeah. And the lawyer... You know, that, that still doesn't know. answer the question. Why would she be interested right. in you? Exactly. <laughs> well, the answer is, in his own mind, he's irresistible. Uh, yeah. He's fighting women off everywhere he goes. <laughs> he was uh, a male that, slut. That there's no question that Casey recognized right away that he was so different from every one of those creepy guys. It's like, oh, what's this handsome guy doing here? He shouldn't be here. Uh, it, it would have been great if he if he was watching the film. And there was an outtake where Casey Moreau was heard saying, "Get that piece of shit out of here," <laughs> something like that. I know it would have been great. Uh, but I think he himself doesn't see himself as a as a sex offender, which makes it easy i mean he said things to that effect but it makes it easier for him to then sort of be able to have that relationship with casey because he's uh i don't know i don't think he can he's not even honest with himself i think like when he says i didn't even mean to go there i think what he's basically saying is i didn't even get to fuck a kid well well, the worst one is in my mind when you break it all all down and he finally acknowledges things and then he he goes through the stupid self-analysis, this totally unnecessary, just stupid, 
where he goes, well, you know, maybe I did it, but I, I need to figure out why. People may not care why, but I need to know why. It's like, it's, it's, that, that's what infuriates <laughs> yeah. me. Yeah. That's what really infuriates well, me. Well, you know what that means. What he's saying is, I need to find out who I can blame. Who exactly. Who did mm. whatever they did to me that made me do this? Was it my father no. for not being um, involved in my life and not caring about me? Was it my siblings? For not giving me macaroni and cheese. Was it Some, because I couldn't say no? Line. Right. I couldn't yeah. say no. And whose fault is it that I couldn't say no? It must be somebody else's fault. That's what he was trying to figure out. It's like he's trying to distance himself. He's trying to split himself into two people. The good Lauren and the bad Lauren. The bad Lauren we're going to get rid of. You know, uh, it's, it's it's an anomaly. It didn't happen. You know, it's it. Yeah. got to be a reason for it. You know, no, you're just a just a disgusting individual <laughs> always have been but i get that he thinks about what he, what will be for his pleasure before he thinks about any kind of consequence which is why then when mm -hmm. he's he's it's like the reality of what he's doing is a selfish act and unkind. He's like, oh, well, it must have been someone else's knock on effect that made me do that. I couldn't possibly be that bad a person. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. And he, yeah, he wants to join the admit. crowd and hating what he did. He wants to be able to be part of that crowd to say mm. that pedophiles are bad people. Yeah. You know, he, he wants to be normal. He wants to be. He wants to be just a, a faceless person in the crowd. He doesn't want to be that person. But he, then he's still so sort of um, delusional over his innocence that he's not managed to get out. Like the only way he'll ever get back any kind of nor normality is getting out of that rape class, which he can't because he can't admit that he did a bad thing even to himself. Well, so he can't admit the reason he did it was that he is attracted to young girls. Right. Sorry to interrupt you, but yeah, no, no. after admitting that he he chose to fantasize about Mary from Little House on the Prairie, when there are many adult women he could have chose to think about during that time, he chose her, mm. and he yeah, chose yeah. The, the girls from high school to think about. Yeah. Yeah. He won't admit that you know he made a million excuses for why why that wasn't that bad that it's not a pedophile thing it's just you know that's when i knew them when they were 14 and 15 so there's nothing wrong it's with not that. a I big evaluation five of them yeah it's not a big leap for for probation to recognize very quickly that he should not be passing this class and 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 by saying that i mean like the the assignment you read yesterday uh when I can't remember what the question was, but he said something about uh, always wanting to plea. Uh, you know, the, I think the question was what led you to it, or whatever it was, trying to please my family and the, and then he puts victims in quote, victim. That in its, of itself would fail him in that class. Just putting victim mm -hmm. in quote. It, mm -hmm. it, you could say so much about that. Yeah. You know, you can say that he doesn't recognize it's a victim or that because it was a decoy, it wasn't a real victim. You know, however you want to put mm -hmm. it. Just the fact that he wrote that one thing in that that one word with the quotations around it, probation would zero right in on it and say, "No, this guy's new another year." Yeah, yeah, and he'll never he'll never realize that just sort of being honest is gonna be the key to getting out of that. Because I don't think because by doing that though, he has to admit to himself that he isn't. He's he won't get away with it anymore. Be the probation knows him too well now to know yeah. he's full of shit. So he, he could have played the game the first couple of years, but he's too stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm sure a lot of the people that did things like this rehabilitated and went to live fairly normal lives. But do you know what's funny about. Oh, sorry, Adam. That's all right. If he'd done that, we wouldn't have all of this content. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Let's uh, not mock it too much. But what's funny about the catfishing as well, have you noticed how all, they all seem to know each other or have some affiliation with each yeah. other? Like, he doesn't yeah, quite figure weird. out that oh, yeah. um, the he, he thinks the world's a very small place. Like, mm. Will, like, how did it, Jamie Amy is a supermodel, but yet she used to go out with Will and Will's now going out with Winnie. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and Winnie knows yep. Emma, and uh, Emma knows Casey. <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> it's, it's like the, a co- the world according to Lauren. It's just one fucking planet with about eight people on it. And they all know each other. <laughs> and, and they all Chris know Xavier. Yeah, he's the mastermind who controls everything. And then you've got everybody else who just interbreeds. And, but he still doesn't get any. Well, that's Very why I, the Casey, the newest Casey was... Um, she kind of had a better cover because she wasn't affiliated with them at first. What ended up happening, Lauren fucked that up for himself because he was talking to Casey. He immediately started talking about Jamie to her. And in this, in this universe, Casey had no idea about any, any of this universe. Yeah. (laughs) You know, this, this um, reincarnation of Casey had no idea about Jamie or Winnie or Emma or any of it. She was just the actress from the show. He immediately started talking about Jamie, bragging basically about how, um, you know, they were broken up and he still loved Jamie, but he weren't in love with her, whatever bullshit. Like, look, I've had girlfriends before. I'm going to tell you about them just so you know, other women do want me. In fact, my ex wants me back, but I'm interested in you. And then he sent her a picture of Jamie's ID out of the blue for no reason. And she's like, why? Yeah, she's like, what? Which is such a fucking, I mean, I would be furious. Like, Mm. you know, why are you showing a stranger my ID? ID. Yes, a picture of her ID. Mm -hmm. Like, I assume they've just kind of made up this thing. Yeah, it was a Photoshop. Yeah, it was a Photoshopped ID, of course. But but, um, he had asked the robot for that at some point to, like, prove she was real. So they Photoshopped a picture of an an ID for her. I think they blurred out her name. Um, I don't know. But anyway, so he sent that to Casey again out of the blue. And she's like, why did you send that to me? And he said, oh, just so you know what she looks like. And it was obviously because Jamie is super beautiful. So he wanted to look at a beautiful woman. Mm. Yeah, look at how beautiful this was. I was dating this beautiful woman. We were going to get married. We were engaged. So I'm like a a valuable man yeah, that, you know, that right. other women want, just so you know. So he opened right. that door himself, though, because he started talking about Jamie, He, um, which led Casey to get curious and to look up Jamie's videos because he told her that Jamie was a porn star. <laughs> and that's how Casey fell in love with Jamie. Uh... That's how this ruffle began. And um, I think he gave Jamie Casey's email address for some reason. Like that can't backfire on him. Like he can't, he just can't keep his mouth shut. So he brought those two worlds together in that situation. And then he started to get suspicious and say, well, Jamie, why was you, why was you emailing Casey? And you two was always ganging up on me. Like he started to get suspicious and think it was a catfish and the red flags. And they throw it in his face. Like, Lauren, you're the one who introduced this. Remember? It's so, so he, easy to double cross him, isn't it? It's so easy, yeah. He he asks for it. Do you think he was looking for a throuple? No, I don't think he even knew what a throuple was. Nah. Well, yeah, they... yeah. It wasn't much of a throuple, was it? <laughs> really? Favoritism. So it was Casey and Jamie and their relationship, and they didn't even like Lauren. <laughs> It was the weirdest <laughs> thruple ever. <laughs> he um, went to rape class and told them he was in a thruple. No. <laughs> he did, yeah. Oh, and their names were Carnation and Tool. <laughs> yep, he was in a thruple with Car- with Jamie, Amy, Boutte, the porn star. He didn't, he didn't tell the class one was a porn star. Did he? There is he no Jamie, Amy, Boutte. You know they were all they online looking Jamie. for her, right? <laughs> They knew, uh, I don't probably, they knew about Jamie before Casey came along because he told them, um, he told them about Jamie. I know he told at least the provider that she was a porn star. I know probation looked her up. Sorry. Yes, probation looked her up and said, Lauren, there's nobody named Jamie Amy Boutet. Just so you know. (laughs) 
But then, it's, again, it that, shows that, how easily he's fooled again, though, because then she goes, well, that's my stage name. And he's like, what oh, What about okay. the airport like... thing? <clears throat> how amazing is that? He brought a the frozen tea pizza, tea. Andrew. <laughs> he brought a frozen pizza on that trip. What do you mean? Do you know which one we're talking about? To go get Casey. Oh, wait, to go and pick up Casey. Yeah, 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 yeah. He yeah. wanted him to bring a pizza, and he brought a frozen pizza. <laughs> oh, you're kidding. <laughs> What's he going to do with what that? Like, get? ask the people at the airport to stick it in the oven. <laughs> well, he cooked it, he wrapped it in tin foil, and he brought it what? along with him. But again, that's his own fucking fault, because it's not like they had been talking for days or weeks and she said okay lauren i'm coming up on this date be ready make sure you know i've got my plane ticket i'm all ready he was texting her all day annoying her there was no mention of her flying to maine that day or anytime yeah. soon at that time he's texting her all day saying when you're coming up here when you're coming up here when you're coming up here <laughs> and so casey got annoyed that, that, and said i'm on my way now i'm on a plane right. <laughs> yeah i'm actually on a plane right now i'm on my way right now and he's like oh my God. no you're not and she said, yeah, I am. Uh, look. So Blue Boy quickly photoshopped a plane ticket and sent it to Lauren. and said, see, I'm on a plane right now. So she said, uh, yeah, actually, I'm going to need you to pick me up at the Portland airport at, you know, whatever time. And she's, she's like, oh, oh Portland's really? a yeah. long way from uh, Cornville. Two it hours. Is. Yep. Yeah. Two hours. Two hours. Two hours. <laughs> he drove to the airport at. It was like two in the morning and then he had to drive back another two hours back to Cornville and he had to work. So he ended up, I think he ended up getting home at like 5 a.m. and he had to work very shortly after. So he was up (laughs) all night long. I'm really confused though. Why did, why did he take a frozen pizza with him? I I think it's a nostalgia thing. Yeah. Because he weren't bringing any pizza the first time. Right, but you would you would stop uh, and buy a pizza, right? You wouldn't bring uh, a frozen pizza out of your freezer. Well, he was broke; he couldn't buy a pizza. I think Casey might have asked him. Like, actually, I'm but, I'm playing pretty hungry. He's well, like, well I got that, a pizza. Ooh. But 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 you you you'll get ill if you eat a frozen pizza. <laughs> you st- frozen you're pizza stuttering on your own rage, bro. Adam. I just I'm trying to understand how it was cooked. Like, Oh, it was a cooked frozen pizza. Yeah, yeah. Right, no, okay. right. I misunderstood. I thought it took like a fucking Chicago <laughs> town in a box, and then look, the pizza. I thought he literally grabbed, like she'd gone get pizza and gone. Well, I've got one in the freezer, no, but I haven't got time from, to yeah. cook it, so I'll just take it in the car with me and hope it cooks. I it, it was. Like, he put it on his engine or something. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's what I thought you were going to say that he was going to do, no. especially when you said it was wrapped in tin foil. But um, yep. Oh, no, right, I cooked a cooked frozen pizza. So, uh, yeah, a cheap cooked something pizza. edible. Well, yeah, Amanda, you were you were talking about him uh, introducing um, Jamie to his class in the throuple. Another point I keep pounding over and over is that one of the biggest joys for Lauren is to have other men envious of him. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if a woman was was to appear. He would be glad if they just were able to walk into Walmart together hand in hand. And then she said, OK, goodbye. I had enough. It would still make him put him over the moon. I believe he his biggest motivation in life is to one up other guys. That's his biggest motivation in life. Uh, that's why he wants the attractive woman, because other guys won't be jealous of him in that situation. Um, mm-hmm. That's what he lives for. I know. I wonder if he showed his class a picture of Jamie. I I don't remember him ever mentioning that he did, but I wouldn't be surprised at all if he did yeah. for that very reason, just to brag about how how pretty she is and she's gonna yes, marry they went me. They went after a tea kettle over her. Well, how could you not? Yeah, she is gorgeous. Um, it's, it, you know, just just seeing the pictures with him and her in them, it's so funny. Oh, so funny! It's so funny. One of my favorite things is that they the um, the robot was six feet tall. They made sure to include that just so she would tower over Lauren and make him feel stupid. And in the pictures, the photoshopped pictures and like the uh, the like drawings of them together, she's always like a foot and a half taller than him in the pictures. <laughs> 
Yep. Yep. Brilliant. Oh, um, right, we're going to have to start wrapping it up. I know it's been a relatively short, long day, but we've covered quite a lot of ground, and there's still... You know, we could just go on for hours talking about him and all the... I like the crazy scenarios that the catfishing has conjured and his reactions to them and, and all the little funny quirks and the little, you know, sayings he's come out with. It, it's just so... Creative. It's so engrossing, it really is. It's um, yeah, it's great, and you know, it's like no nothing doubt you've ever known. known. It's so no. new. Well, it's kind of. I like the fact that there's only us weirdos who kind of like it. I explain it to some people, and nobody gets it, which is fine. You know, I don't have a problem with that. Some people think are very strange, which is probably mm. true. You know, I can't really mm-hmm. I can't disagree with that, but. You know, I, I do like the humour in it. I like the fact that sometimes, like, I'm not in the mood. You know, I'm, I love my music, but sometimes I'm just not in the mood for it. So, like, I'm driving home. It's like, what can I put on? I'll put a long call on. I'll just listen to him shouting and screaming. And, and it, it, there's always something, you know. That, or mm-hmm. I'll just go back to the yeah. lawn is a butthole call. Or, oh, let's see, it's Sunday night. I'm a bit bored. What should we do? Oh, let's have a stream and go over the chat log. It's, it's great fun. So I, I am, yeah. I'm grateful for the lawn aspect of my life. I'm not totally comfortable with it because I do look back and think, fucking hell, how many hours have I spent on YouTube? I could have <laughs> done something really productive. I could have learned two languages or something that would have enriched my life in a really meaningful way. But whenever I get a bit down, I always think, right, some people have watched Game of Thrones seven times or been binge watch Netflix bullshit or whatever or get drunk at this is worse this is worse come on oh come on dude i'm expecting you to pick me up at least we can get a degree in abnormal psychology at this point if we just took some courses we could just go right to the exam yeah oh dear oh dear well we've got family here for lawnmas so i need to go and prepare the lawnmas roulade you do that (laughs) um well thank you to everybody in the chat it's been a pleasure to have you all here. Alicia, Cat G, good to see you. Uh, Precious Venus, Coda, Coda. Happy Lawnmas to you all. NCA87, good to see you. Um, yeah, uh, Rachel D, Ruthia, happy Lawnmas to everybody. It's It's been great. Uh, we had a lot of people in the chat. Obviously, as much as I question this kind of thing, we're not, we're not any close to drying up just yet. Um, Shin always messages me every few days and comes up with a new idea. So we're always uh, there's always stuff in the pipeline, isn't there? Yeah, there's there's a Lord application everywhere in life. Yes. Yeah. I like that. Don't be, don't be like Lorne. Don't be like Lorne. Thank you for to Amanda James for um, trying to get rid of that cold which is still hanging on to her. Um, so thanks for joining us. You're welcome. I'm drinking coffee to help get rid of it. Weak, that... weak coffee, I hope. Just before bed. Yeah. Don't forget to take that caffeine just before bed. That'll do the trick. Um, and Amanda's still offering $5 for anybody who wants to buy the cold. So. <laughs> it's <is> true. <laughs> Sounds like a bargain. Um, thank you to Mr. Shins Koala. Thank you. As ever. And uh, Adam, thank you very much for joining us, dude. Thanks nice, nice for having me. We wouldn't be able to have a, a normal um, Lawmas day without you because you, you were here in the original one where we had Kennedy on and it all went <laughs> yeah. wrong. And yeah. well, that was a, well, you mean that, the original one where everyone ditched me and just said yeah, that me one. to host it. Yeah, yeah thanks. And <laughs> yeah, uh, try, and, try and make some entertainment. With, uh, well, you made your own entertainment. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I couldn't relax. Exactly. Couldn't resist that. That, that was the, that was our after hours entertainment. <laughs> yeah. Oh, brilliant! Right, okay. Thank you very much for listening, guys. Thank you for taking part. Leave any comments if you um, in the you know comments below if you're watching it in retrospect. So, um, yeah, thank thanks for still tuning into our videos and. Um, you know, engaging with us because there's no point doing it otherwise. So, yeah, do appreciate it. So, have a brilliant rest of your lawmas day. If you're ever feeling down, 
just remember the purpose of all this. It could be worse. You could be lawn. You're not. So you're a winner straight away. Don't